Hello guys, welcome back. Today I'm looking at a program called Simple OCR. So that's Optical Character Recognition. So it should convert your pixels or something you've scanned into a Word document or plain text. Now it's totally 3D option, so it's not going to be as good as Abbey Fine Reader or maybe Rediver, it's an Omni page. But it might be able to get away with it just doing enough to convert for us. So what we'll do first is type in Simple OCR, one word, into your search engine download the demo from the web page and we'll have a little go so I'm going to open it up now the first thing you'll get at the top is select writing type now the first option is the totally free simple OCR which does the conversion again it will do it from scanner underneath there's another option which should be able to convert your handwritten into a font now we'll have a look at that as well quickly so what you could do is write out a page maybe up to 100 words and we could use that they recommend and they reckon you should use a sample of between 300 500 words of your writing so it can analyze it you can correct it and proofread it and then create a profile for that writer so it'd be accurate so i'm going to click handwriting so first we create a new writer name select new and type in your name there so that that will be the person that's actually written the information so i'll put john smith in and click OK. Now you can see on the left here, if you've got multiple writers, you can have multiple names and choose the correct one that's relevant because that's what you'll be correcting for. Make sure you've got the correct language there and whether you want to choose case upper and lower or just uppercase only. But I want upper and lower. And again, you can choose your interface there, but I think there's only the US there anyway. Now I've got the name there, I'm ready to select and this window will pop up. And what it's going to do is going to take your handwritten information, check for any errors, and then have you proofread it. And it's going to learn, save, and finish, and it creates that profile for that writer. So first, we're going to click next, and at the top, it's telling you you need between three and five hundred words. I've only done about thirty-five to fifty, just as a sample, quickly to show you how it works. But I recommend you do that because the better the sample, the more sample you got, hence the better the profile and the conversion will be. So I'm going to click next again. It's going to ask me where I've got my sample of handwriting. Now I've actually put it in a scanner, I've just wrote a blank bit of paper. But you can do it from the scanner or you might actually have it in a file where you've uploaded it through a memory stick. Or you might have taken a photo with your phone and sent it to yourself via email. But either way, if you can find that for me. So I'm going to do scanner. Now click the scanner options here and you can set up your scanner by using select scanner. So if you're going to scan it as we do it. So I'm using the Epson, which is the Wi-Fi version, and click OK. So now I'm ready to do, I've got an option of preview scan image, which is always good to see the preview. And I'm going to click OK. And it should start scanning. It's popped up automatically, as you can see. I'm going to maximise that window, so you can see. Not the best handwriting in the world. And I think it's going to struggle, as you can probably see. For example, look at culture. I'll split the R into two and the 21st it might struggle with and plus I've got an error there down the bottom so you can zoom in and out bottom left hand corner but I want to click continue and I'll drag this over to the right so the next thing we've got to do is correct page so for example is the image good enough that you can use well yeah it's clear I can see the text fine so there's no problem with that otherwise you could delete it or zoom in just to check it or you can even rotate it using that option there but the image is upright and it's good quality so I can move on to the next option which is word count click next now it says at the top here I should add another page because they want at least three to five hundred so if you're actually going to create a profile and you want to buy this option then make sure you go through the correct procedure but I'm only using 45 there and again I could add another page but I'm going to put I'm happy with the amount of text again you can rotate it or zoom in and out or maybe you want to delete it and start again but I'm going to click next and it's going to submit it for processing it says that the recognition results achieved for your handwriting are lower than the average again my handwriting is not brilliant but also I didn't give enough sample did I they have got an option there for tips but on my link if I click on it it seems to be dead yours might be ok so again check that but I could cancel learning come out of it so not bother learning to correct it but I do want to correct it so leave it on continue learning and then click next to go to the learning phase and you can see what it says there it says words coloured in red were not found in a dictionary words coloured in blue but suspected to be incorrect not are incorrect 
so that's when you've got our incorrect any words by typing over it by selecting a word from the list that opens up beneath it when you go on some words as you can see there now it gives you a drop down list so I'm going to click next and I want to go through and correct it so the first option was sure that's fine so if I just click the enter key there go to the next word my that looks fine to me so I'm going to click enter the that's good now this is all wrong isn't it I've got 21st so I've got no option in a drop down menu so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click backspace I'm going to use the arrows to move along left and right so I want 21 that's better and again century and that says here children which should be culture so again it's not giving a drop down list so again if I double tap the word I can type in culture and then you go through your whole document dragging it down checking whether it's right or wrong I'm going to go to the end quickly where it's an error there red which should be correct so I'm going to tap on it and type correct and again a word here if you highlight it that should be reliable so I'm just going to write over that type over that quickly and again you can see it there just click the enter key just to check your spelling once it's all done you corrected everything then you can select accept if you're happy with it so I'm just going to click through that quickly just to show you and that's all done next on the list click next and now you're ready to save the file but before you do before you send it to a word document or plain text file select statistics because it gives you information for example the amount of words recognized words 30 estimated recognized characters even merge words in this case there was no merge words and words with touching characters words with spaces and so on and there was no abbreviated words and it gives you the full amount of words there click OK just a quick point here when you click into a word and it should be merged you could use the merge option and it will merge the two words together that are next to one another and you can unmerge them if you want as well or there might be something that you want to keep as an image see it keeps that as an image as original handwriting rather than conversion you might have something in there like a special character it's not picking up or an image so you can do that as well but click back off when it comes off if left save for if I click next it should then ask me where well, I want to save it to as a word document so I'm going to pop that on my desktop just call that sample and click save and you see at the bottom there I'm saving it as a word document or I can save it as a text and click save next I'm going to scan from the scanner and convert it into either a word document or plain text so select a page there's your scanner there now go to scanner options and make sure you set everything up correctly first for example do you want grey color I always leave it on color I like to leave it on default in case it's a mixture also resolution 200 or 300 I'm going to select 300 that's 300 dots per inch so it's more accurate than 200 dots it take a bit longer file will be slightly bigger but the accuracy will be better so hopefully the conversion will be better you can choose a train driver so if I select main or alternate if I click select you can choose which one you want there so I've got my Epson scanner option there if you've got a Canon use that or your OptiBook so that's my Epson workforce which is a wireless one which is a Wi-Fi one I'm going to select so I can use the main driver that comes with that an alternative one so I'm going to use the main one bottom left hand corner another important option if I leave this Twain graphical user interface off Twain is your driver remember for your scanner that would use the built-in one in simple OCR to actually do the scanning if I turn it on it will use the one that come with my Epson scanner will pop up graphical user interface to scan with but I'll show you that in a minute so I'm going to leave that on for now choose your paper size here be A4, A5 or letter or A3 happy with A4 but again you can choose specifically what you want by using those options there next is save as choose whether you want to save as a word document or plain text so as I've got office there I'm going to use the word option you haven't got many formats to save it to remember it is a free program choose where you want to save it to so scanned images select modify and I can change the path I want to save them to go to general now once it's scanned it'll give you an option of any highlighted spelling mistakes now you can un I'll show you how to change the colors with that in a minute so you know which is which but you can untick it for not to come up with spelling mistakes but I recommend leaving that there the whole point though of converting it is to get a good accurate copy in a font format so it's definitely worth doing you can choose whether or not you want to highlight only highly suspected words or always verify numbers so for example highlight only highly suspected words that might be an error 
it will highlight them. Now again, it does different colours, which I'll show you in a minute. Also underneath here, you can this is up to you. You want to choose numbers and backlash, for example. You could always have backlash precedes numbers, or sometimes you can have it precede numbers. Again, you might never want that to happen, so it depends on what you're doing and what you're formatting. These are your training parameters. Go to text display. This is actually what gives you the errors and colour codes them. So, for example, suspected words, you can choose a colour there. They're coming up in blue. So any suspected words it thinks might be a spelling error once it's scanned it will come up in blue so you can check it. Words not in a dictionary, so spelling issues. I always do red. I always use red for anything that's not in a dictionary. So I can access that quickly and either delete it or change it. Or when you're actually selecting a word, so you know where you're on it, I chose yellow so I know that I'm actually on that word and that's what I'm dealing with. Again you choose your own colours there and you can even change your fonts what you want there as well if you want. Click cancel. Also you can choose highlighted text by selecting bold, italicise or underline so you can see it better. Probably bold's a good option actually, I'm going to make that bold so you can see that better. Also you've got abbreviations there, so any abbreviations you can choose the colour you want. Next is image display. How this works is, when you've scanned a document, simple OCR might not have picked it up properly, what's an image, what's text. You can choose the option here where it image region and choose a colour. And that way when you create a rectangle around it, it tells simple OCR to see that as an image, not as text. I mean that can be useful for so many factors. For example, you might have specific images or, or symbols that you want to see it recognise as an image rather as text and it might be distorted. So I'm going to select OK and I'm now going to scan from the scanner. And remember, I'm scanning from the scanner using the Twain Graphical U interface, which comes with the Epson. So I'll click OK, and it should bring up a little window, and there it is. That's my graphical user interface for my Pacific Epson. So if I close that and click OK, click Add Page again, I'm going to use the one off so it uses the built in one in simple OCR so I don't use the Epson one. Click OK. I tend to use the Epson one though because it gives you more options as well. And there we go. There's my text. Happy with that? Now I can do a number of things at the top here. One, if I want to, I can create a new document. I could save the common image as you see it. I could select a profile, but remember what that was for? That was for handwritten. You've got help files, and you've got how many pages there are. So if I select this option, if there's multiple pages, it will then give me those options of multiple pages. But I've only got the one page, so I'll click back on it. I can zoom in and out. I can even rotate the image by using that option. These are the options I showed you earlier. So one, you can select a picture region. Two, you can do an ignore region where you don't want to take no notice of that region, convert it or anything, or you can delete a region. So let me show you. So I'm going to come up. Let's just say in this document you decide actually I'm going to choose the picture region, hold the left button, and I want that to be seen just as a picture. So when we come to convert to text, it will see that as an image. So it won't convert it, it will st still be as an image. Again, you can click there, so you might want to ignore. You might go, actually, I want that totally ignored. So you can choose that option to ignore it, something that you don't want there to be converted. And if I click this button here and click back on it, it gets rid of it, so that deletes it. So remember, the first option is for anything that's an image. This is for information you want ignored. You might not want that converted. And when we do convert it with the convert to text, it won't be there. Or you can delete that by left clicking on it and getting rid of it. Once converted here, then you can use these options for bullets, bold, italicize, underline. So should we have a little go? So I'm now going to convert that to text. And it brings up this window. What it's doing again, it's like it did with the handwritten information, is it's making sure you correct it, there's nothing wrong. And I chose those options with colours, remember? So anything blue is suggesting there could be an issue with it. Anything red, it's not in a dictionary. So that way you can go through it quickly and check it. So again, we've got the option here, open. Click the enter key and I can go through it, checking each option. And you see at the top again, it shows you it in real time, so you can choose the correct one. As I've got the word I want, so I'm going to type in the and then click through it. Again I'm happy with that so I could come up to here I could put accept so it jumps through to the next word. Now you can see that word's not in a dictionary but I'm happy with that, accept. I'm just going to put accept all the way through it. That's going to ask you do you want to save the document as it is? 
save for later viewing, add another page before you convert it, reorder pages, so you've got multiple pages you can reorder them in position, one, two, three and then change them all around. You might want to discard what you're doing add the session, statistics will show you all the information on your conversion as we saw again with the handwritten information. But I'm going to put save document as, save it to my desktop as test and click save. Now I'm going to save it as a document, Word document rather than a text file. Again, your choice is yours. And I want it to open up the default Word processor which is Word. Choose do not open if you don't want. Now I can choose here, what should I do next, start a new session. I want to stay in current session and click OK. In case I need to do a few more corrections. And there you go, there's a conversion. And it wasn't bad considering it was a scan, it came up pretty well. Works a lot better off than the handwritten information. And you can see what I did there, because I saw that as an image, so now that is an image rather than standard text. So I can see that as an image. So that's another option you could use. So next we're going to do it from an uh, image. So I'm going to click Add Page and select File. Now I'm going to click OK so I can convert a file. There we go, I've got a document there. Now see underneath file types, it's only allowing me TIFF, JPEG or BMP. Which is disappointing, there's no portable document format because that's a format a lot of people convert with. But let's work with TIFF anyway. I'm going to click Open. And there's my document. I can now select the option to convert to text and again we go through the same procedure we did with the original scan and then you can convert it by correcting it first and when you're finished you can turn it into a word document so overall the options are quite limited the scanning from the scan is pretty good I like that you've got to pay for the handwritten option so again the option is yours on there and the conversion option bit disappointing it hasn't got a PDF option to convert because that's what most people tend to use with journals and that but there again as a free option it's, it's pretty good and probably worth a look at thanks for watching